Hello and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 for my video on AutoDrive. So this is part two on um, my videos about AutoDrive and how to use it, how to set it up properly and how, yeah, how to make the best of it because it really is an outstanding mod. So if you haven't watched part one, I do recommend you go and do that. Unless you know what you're doing and you're just looking for something specific in this video, then fair play. But if you have, haven't watched part one um, and you're new to it and you want to learn the basics and then move on to a little bit more detailed things, so I'll put a link right now in the top right corner for part one if you haven't watched it. And you can watch that and then you can come straight back to this and you can follow on. So for part two in this video, what we're going to go over is reversing into triggers. Uh, we're going to set up a cell point, but we're going to be doing it in reverse. Not all the way, but just to the triggers and cell point uh, from the silo as well. And then what I'm also going to do is show you how to set up like a junction like this. I think this is the junction here will be perfect for what I mean. Uh, so I'll set it up when you can do the proper cornering. So if you did send a truck on your auto drive and it's got a big uh, trailer on the back, it's not going to get caught or hit anything. So we'll try and make it a little bit challenging. I'll put uh, maybe some trees in just to make it a little bit more difficult. But I will be show showing you the reverse triggers and also, yeah, the cornering and how to set it up. So I have put this silo down. It's a nice little pretty place to put a silo. I've tried to make it look as, as good as I could. Uh, but I've put some fence in because we can't just drive through it and turn off. It's it's uh, obviously fenced off, so we need to reverse into this silo to pick up grain or even drop grain off. This is technically a farm silo, so we'd be collecting stored grain from here or we'd be dropping it off from the field. And then we're going to take it to a cell point, which is just over there, and we're going to try and reverse into that as well. So the first thing we're going to do is just talk about the cornering. So when you set up corners, you've got to make sure you do it right to predict that you might have a bigger vehicle that's got a heavier trailer on and the turning apex of that, that vehicle is going to be a lot different to maybe just a tractor on its own or, or a truck that you've got on its own. So you do need to try and plan ahead and set the courses or the networks that you do. Um, the worst case scenario is always the best, I think. So if you do it the wide angles and uh, you connect it uh, spot on, then you'll never have to worry about um, if it's going to clip a tree or, or anything like that. So I think to make this challenging, this is a perfect time to stick in a couple of trees. There we go. So we'll go to construction. Um, landscaping, I think it is. Trees, there we go. So what kind of tree do we want? We can pop one there. It won't let us, but we can pop one there. I don't want it kind of like going in like a bush. Because that will be tricky. So if I put one there, that might be really challenging. But hey-ho, let's go for it. Why not? shop very restricted um, and then I think we'll also do a couple there so we can't kind of make a wide berth off the track I think that looks pretty good you know you're not usually gonna see more than that anyway we've got that one big tree just sticking there but that that should be fine so I've gone with a, a modest tractor and a, a modest trailer but this hopefully will work with a, a larger vehicle after and we'll try it out so what I'm going to do first is show you what you need to start off by doing. Now, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to have a route that it can join to, connect to. And the best way to do that is just to drive up and down. So if you haven't got this already set up, you drive all the way up to the top of the road and back down. Um, and then as soon as you meet another junction, maybe a T-junction at the end, you'd stop. Now, I'm not going to be doing anything further in this direction. So I'm probably just going to do it to about there. And then when I come back down here... Um, I do want to take this route to this to the cell point, so I'll try and just make it maybe to about there, and then we'll do our turnings after when we do the cell point. Uh, but right now, we, we can just simulate this area mainly is our focus because of the fact that that's what we're trying to set up the junction at. So I'm going to start recording. Click left to start recording a one-way track, and I'm going to just start driving on the left-hand side because I am from the UK even though I'm on a, an American map I'm kind of going a bit of a bit crazy here uh, but what I'm going to do is you can see that the points that I've deleted from that was already on the map we're not going to connect to that because we're just going to pretend that that wasn't there and then that's that done and then we're going to need to go back on ourselves. so the main thing that I'm trying to show you here is you need to already have the road set up both ways so if I start from about there, now what this is going to do 
because it's going to connect to there. So I'm going to delete that one out. There we go. And we can just start driving from here. Now we should, I know there's a branch there, but we shouldn't hit the tree in general. It just kind of overlaps. And I'd say, because we are going to be using this, it's probably better if I just drive to about here. See, I'm happy with that. That's, that's uh, good enough for me. So we'll stop that there. Now, I tried to do this all the way through on uh, Challenging Valley with the uh, auto driving there, and I did set up a really good network. One that I didn't have much trouble with at all. So what we're going to do now is obviously set up the cornering to go right into that junction and off the main road. Let's call this the main road. Um, so you've got to think about what you need to do. You need, to, you need a vehicle going that way, but then you need a vehicle coming back out this way. Then you need a vehicle going in that way and coming out back out that way. Now, if you've got a crossroad, it's even more uh, difficult because you've got to set up, again, the double the amount that we're going to be doing now. Uh, but the best way to do this is just to drive it yourself. So I'm going to start off here from this point. I'm going to bring up auto drive menu. I'm going to start recording. And I'm going to pretty much just take as wide angle as I can. As if I had a big trailer on the back like I am doing. Slower the better because then obviously you can be more accurate. And I think that's fine. Now I know we're going to be going into that silo eventually. But we're not going to be doing it just yet. So we're just simulating as if it was a junction and we wanted to carry on. So there you go. That's, that's enough. So that's one way done. Now, we want to come back out this route. Now, if you already had this road set up, you'd just connect to it like I showed you in the last episode. you just link them together. But because we've not got that, we're just going to have to record it again from scratch. So I think this will be a good point. Now, again, it's going to link to that because that's how I've set it up. So we don't want that to happen. You can obviously just delete it like that. But then say you wanted that back over there, you can just stretch it out and it's like nothing changed. So what we need to do now again is really slow. We've got a big trailer on the back, bigger than this, and we're going to kind of branch ourselves out. We're going to take a big wide berth. And then we're going to connect back up. Now again, I have done it on the left-hand side just because it's uh, my habit from driving in the UK. But this same applies to the right-hand side as well. So that to there, connect you up, probably line that up a little bit better. There you go. So now we've got two corners set up, I think, spot on. So all we need to do now is reverse and do it the other way. So hopefully by doing this, you get in the, the main point is to predict the angle that you're going to be turning in on. Now, it might be even better to prepare your corner a little bit further back than I'm already doing it. Because uh, if you've got a big arctic and it's going to turn in left there it's going to need a wide angle so the main thing is just to take the widest angle you can possibly do um, not to the point where I'm in the field or anything but you know just so you've got enough room going into that junction without the possibility of hitting a tree or or making a you know just a problem for yourself so I want to move that out because that's started a little bit off key for me so there we go straighten that up now I'm taking it quite far on the right hand side and remember, if you do do something, then you realise there's a problem after. You can always just start again, or make a change, or manually adjust it yourself. So, that's good enough for me. Now, the only problem that I'd have there is if I was coming this way and wanted to go up here, he would have already gone past. But we can rectify that at some point. We could do a connection, or we could even record it separately to go in here from the main road which is probably the best route to do but we don't need to do that because we're not coming from that direction so all I need to do now is prepare myself to go back out but going right at this junction so I'm, all I'm doing now is reversing back out so we can head right from the junction but coming from this direction and then that way now what I will point out is if I set it up from like there for example and then went right it would 
confuse it because we're already branching out this way, whereas we probably want to branch out that way. So I'd say the best place to start it from is always from the main road connection that you've already set up. So we probably want, I'd say, that one there. There's just one just behind my tractor now. Just waiting for that red line connect, which it has done. So let's record from there. Let's move a little bit just to make sure it's okay. Yeah, that's fine. And then what I'm going to do is, again, predicting that I've got a massive trailer on the back, I'm going to try and branch this out. Big berth around the corner. Let it straighten out naturally, and then we'll feed back into the road. Right, so that that's that done pretty much spot on. And we can connect that up like that. Try and straighten it up, job done. So then, now it will work a treat. And you can see that it looks pretty good. Junctions are making sense, you can see the cornering that's happening. Um, and you're giving it plenty of room, just so it doesn't hit anything. So, the best way to figure out if this is working is I'm going to just set a waypoint here on this one. We'll call it, we'll call it A. Well, I tried this last time and it didn't, didn't like it, so we'll just call it A1. See if that works. There you go, that worked. It's not like just single letters or single digits. And then we're going to start off from down here. So we'll call this A2. From that point there. A2. Right, so we're going to test this out now, but I'm going to try it with a bigger tractor and a bigger trailer just to see if it ever took enough of a wide angle. Now, if it didn't, then all you need to do is manually adjust it, but hopefully by being cautious and taking that wide berth, it should be fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is obviously turn down the cornering speed on this vehicle because it will be set to 100. So we'll put it at maybe 50% uh, just as we test this out. And we need to change uh, to A1 and we're making sure that red line is pointing to the start here because uh, if it was over here then obviously you'd have to swing around to come back to that so we just set that going we'll try and race ahead try and stand on that uh, bit of a hill and we get a good view of it now the only thing that's going to have an issue is that tree as he swings around the back end of the trailer could catch it but as you can see that worked an absolute treat so there you go. Even though we didn't set it up with that vehicle, we set it up with a smaller trailer, it still worked pretty fine. And uh, I have to say, I'm actually liking this layout. I think I've uh, built a nice little entrance to the silo. Right, so what we need to do now is plan for the cell point and pick it up from the silo. Now we're going to be doing this in reverse, so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but it should be uh, easily achieved. Uh, but the first thing we need to do is probably from the same point that I did the maneuver which was this point just underneath me um, if you can just make it out there it's already got two uh, nodes coming off it technically where it starts to go wide left and then move over now i'm going to do a third one that's just set up for that silo so as soon as he comes down this road and hits that node he's got three options he's going to take one where he can go straight on two where he can just take the junction to go right down to a2 or he's going to take the third option which i'm going to give him now which is to go into the silo so I've got to try and plan ahead now, because I am what I do want to reverse. It's going to be pretty tricky to reverse because of the two trees that I've put in. So probably the best bet to here would be to go on the grass a bit at the front, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to attack it like that. So I'm going to press record. I'm going to make sure that that node's not facing backwards, because if you are behind the node, it can cause a little bit of issues, but it's fine. And then we're going to start recording like I did before. But we're going to take a wide angle again. And we're going to just missed the tree as you saw and then we're gonna just try and straighten back up over here now the best thing I can say to you is to drive on a little bit further than what you normally would do to straighten up you might think that's a bit crazy but if you've got a much bigger trailer on the back it's going to take longer to straighten up and if you're not straight the reversing that you're going to be doing and recording it won't be the same because you'll have to straighten up and then he'll be off the track um, and it just causes a little bit of issues so if you can Try to go a little bit more forward. So I think that's all right. So I'm going to start recording now, and you'll notice that the line color starts to change to 
like a light blue colour. Now that's because it's noticed that we are reversing. So the best thing to do here is to take this really slow. Uh, the slower the better because you want to try and be as in the middle as possible. Now I know on most maps that are out right now there isn't too many points um, where it's quite narrow but as soon as a, f uh, a map comes out by Oxygen David for example that's quite traditionally British style with some narrow country lanes you're going to find that that's not going to be the case. Right so as you can see that trigger right at the back of me is already well ahead of the tip point. Now that's fine I usually like to have it as far back as I can um, and I'm happy with that but what I'm going to do because I can't if I carry on reversing I'm going to obviously put more points in which I don't want to do. I'm going to carry on driving now as if I was coming back out. So when he's filled up, what does he do? So he starts driving out. A little bit to the left, just to give me a, a nice angle. And then we can start turning and branch back onto this. I might even go past that node. There we go. So we can stop recording. And it all looks a bit crazy, like Spaghetti Junction. But it's all making sense. Now you could drag that out even further if you wanted to. You just don't want him to hit that post. I don't know if that's a collision or not, but if it is, I'll, we'll soon find out anyway. Now what I need to do is go and set that waypoint. Now that I'm not in record mode, I can just drive straight on and make sure that my red line on my tractor is hitting the furthest node which is one off and there we go so that's now there. so what I'm going to call this the farm silo I think I've actually got one called that so I might just call it farm silo Ooh. caps on farm silo number two that should be fine so that's all set up to go He'll recognise the trigger, he might reverse a little bit further back, um, but hopefully he'll hit that point and then carry on. If not, we can always adjust it because of the, the gate it is. Quite difficult to uh, predict where that is. Where it's gonna where he's gonna kind of carry on from. So let's just manoeuvre back out. We've got him coming out of here. And we wanna now sort out the route going into the south point. So I think the perfect place to do that would be around here because we've got quite a bit of room there to turn. So I'd say this is a perfect spot to do this. So if we start recording and again go quite a bit left, we'll take this bit of a shortcut into the south point. Now I could go all the way round, but I'm not going to do that because what I want to do is reverse to the south point. So I'm going to straighten up again. Nice big runoff to straighten up. Just a bit overkill, but you know, that should be plenty. In fact, let's go a bit more. Why not? It's better be safe than sorry with these routes. And then we're going to reverse. Again, just go slow. So you've got control of your actions as you reverse in the trailer. And then what you want to do is again line it up to that, just that tip point there. And the smaller the actions, the better. If you're doing big turns, and there's more chance of it to have a problem. And I'll probably put it one more back. In fact, we've got plenty of room. We may as well go another one. And then we need to just drive forward. And let's say you were going to just connect back to the main road even though that's on the right hand side this time so what I'll do is just connect that bit there to that and that's it job done so now the loops all set up for the cell point and from the silo just want to delete them because I've got to stop recording there we go right so I'm just driving back to the point over here just so I can name this I think it's the farmers market 
Yep, we'll just call it Farmer's Market. So, there we go. Job done. So now all it's set up. The only thing I need to probably do is just create uh, the route going back. I know I've linked it to this side over here. Uh, but if we wanted to go back to the silo, we wouldn't have a way back out now. We could quite easily drive back from this node just there. There we go. That's the one I want. Start recording. And just to make sure that that's correct, we can just pull it off like that. There we go. So that looks spot on to me. Now all we need to do is just drive back and connect to over here, just, just about there. That's spot on. Job done. Right, so I think now, after I've connected that to that, we are good to go. We really are. So what I'm going to do is set it to the farm silo 2. I'm going to change the mode to deliver. And we're going to set it going. Now the soybeans that are actually in this trailer should now get dropped off by the driver into the silo. So what we're going to do is just, just stand by and watch this. And then if this works perfectly, which I expect it to, we will then tell it from anywhere really to pick up from the silo and deliver it to the cell point so all we need him to do now is straighten up there we go give him plenty of room there to straighten up and we'll watch behind making sure he's got enough room on each side As you can see, he's pretty much done that perfectly. You can't deny that that really did go pretty well. Didn't touch any of the fences, and uh, yeah, he didn't even get close to them. So he's now dropping off the soybeans. We're going to pick this back up in a second and sell it. So let's move him. Let's stop this and... We'll go and move him somewhere else. Now we did only set that up from that direction. You could also link it again uh, to set it from the other direction. Um, it all depends on how in depth you want it to be. So we'll swing it around. I think from here is a good point. Anywhere around here. There we go. So what we want to do is change the mode to pick up and deliver we want to pick up from farm silo 2 we want to take it to the farmers market and we're transporting soybeans and there we go we're only going to do one we're not going to do any more than that but one's enough so let's watch him as he goes on with this I think the best way to do this would get flight mode there we go So no issues there at all, he's taken the perfect angle, make sure he straightens up so he's got a nice smooth re reverse to do, you don't want to make it complicated for him where he's on a, a bit of an angle, the, the further way you go to straighten up the better it is if you've got a larger trailer, because you don't have to worry then if I if I put a larger trailer on the back of this and try and use the same course that I've set up for this same job, would he still do it? But if you've driven a, a a straight road or a longer one that you need at, at, at that time and then you're obviously anticipating uh, what could happen and means you don't have to keep changing it so there you go he's picked it up now what you'll notice is he, he wants to go to that point which is what we told him to do he's hit it with the rear of the, tra the trailer which is why it's important to make sure it's back and now what he'll do is carry on on the exact route that we set up earlier on 
to come out and then he'll link back up and he'll follow on to the cell point. And then he swings around here where you can see the, the tire marks and then he'll reverse back and sell us the soybeans. Now, it does take a lot of work, really, to make a proper, good, uh, useful auto drive uh, network. But, but if you're playing on a map uh, and you really like the map and you've put some serious hours into it, it does, it does become really worth it to put that time in, invest that time into this, uh, because then you can rely on it. You can become a farm manager instead of actually doing everything yourself. You can m manage workers, pay them, and yeah you know that they're not going to have too much issues with uh, hitting things and if you set it up just right then you notice that it works actually pretty well so let's go stand on this roof and we'll get a good look at this now I did I remember that bit there was very close to me hitting that wall so if he just adjusts it, which he has, oh, that must have been close. Look how close that is. And the problem is, and that's, that's my reversing that did that. I was a little bit off to the left-hand side, and I thought at the time, will he correct it? I don't think he will. So when he's, he's obviously going to want to come back to the point. I don't know what happened then. Yeah, he's obviously going to want to come back to the point. And at that point, he's, he's uh, yeah, he might have an issue. So let's just see what he does here. So he's just about made that. That's like scraping the barrel. And then he'll drive forward. So I'd naturally adjust that now. I'd bring it a bit further over to the right-hand side as I'm looking at it, just to make that reverse a little bit easier. And now what he should do is he should actually go back to the point he started from and park up. But that's gone really well. I'm happy with that. Maybe a few little adjustments at the south point as reversing, but apart from that, it's worked to treat. So, you, so if you do follow this technique, you'll be able to make sure with confidence that you, your corners that you've been setting up are reliable and you won't have issues with bigger trailers. And if it's a tight squeeze and you've got a bit of an awkward cell point, reverse um, is easily used. It's not too difficult to set up. You've just got to take your time and also make sure if you're straight when you're doing your reversing, give them a good good amount of room to straighten up and always put your uh, location markers after the the tip point, after the trigger, just so you know you're not going to have an issue if you've got a bigger trailer. And there we go, job done. So he's now completed his job. He's got no more grain to sell. He's happy, I'm happy, um, and he's earned his money. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Hopefully you found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one on Farming Simulator.